Now, more of Hooten's Arkansas football, brought to you by Sonic. Red will receive, defend this end zone. That's head referee Mark Bird, a.k.a. the Birdman, and his crew was on hand last night for first-year program Little Rock Lutheran taking on undefeated Danville. The Little Johns blocked an early Lutheran punt to set up Dustin Danner for this 27-yard touchdown. Danville led 30 to nothing in the first quarter. The final, Little Johns 50, Lutheran zero. Out in West Little Rock, it was the Little Rock Christian Warriors playing host to Marshall and hoping to keep their playoff hopes alive. Quarterback Drew Johnson passed for 178 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Cassidy Johnson hits this 27-yard field goal. That put Christian up 17 to nothing in the second quarter, and Christian's Caleb Camarunas punished Marshall and himself with some hard running. Final score, Little Rock Christian 25, Marshall 8. In Northwest Arkansas, Elkins needed a win over Johnson County Westside last night to stay in contention for a home game in the first round of the playoffs. Westside quarterback Heath Sanders scored this short touchdown, but that's all Westside could do. Elkins allowed just 142 total yards while amassing 435 yards of its own. Final score, Elkins 42, Westside 7. In Pulaski Academy's old conference, the 5 AAA Dover was looking to earn a share of the conference championship at Atkins Thursday night. Both teams moved the ball at times in the first half, but neither could sustain a drive. Dover put together its best scoring threat just before halftime. Back up sophomore quarterback Ryan Coffin waits patiently and then finds tight end Gannon White for a nice game. Dover then runs some misdirection with big man Michael Beck, a 200-pound sophomore, but Beck didn't get in the end zone, and with four seconds left on the clock and no timeouts, Dover couldn't get the ball snapped on the next play. Watch Atkins coaches hurry their team off the field. Dover coaches thought the referee started the clock too soon. You started the clock before you even marked the ball. It's a bunch of BS. It was scoreless at halftime and tied at the end of regulation. But Dover's Michael Williams ran for the game-winning touchdown in overtime, and the Pirates are co-conference champs. Final score, Dover 13, Atkins 7. Harding was looking to sweep the 6AA and had no problem. Quarterback Caleb Keyes goes up top to Heath Adams for a 54-yard touchdown and a 14-0 Harding lead late in the first quarter. And on their next possession, Keyes will hook up with Adams again. This time it's going to go for 92 yards. That made it 21 to nothing in five weeks. The Wildcats should capture their first state title since 1983. Final score, Harding Academy 41, Desert 27. The Augusta Red Devils played host to tradition-rich Barton last night. Augusta needing a win to make the playoffs, but Barton is rarely a gracious guest. Sophomore quarterback Chris Vaughn goes around the left end to give the Bears a 16 to nothing lead in the first quarter. And on its next drive, Barton with Vaughn again, going 39 yards for the touchdown, and the Barton route was on. Augusta, which played for the state championship last year and returned seven starters on both sides of the ball, didn't make the playoffs this year. Final score, Frank McClellan's Barton Bears 50, Augusta 8. Mount Ida entered the game as the number two seed from the 5AA, and it was tied 7-7 with Gurdon early in the third quarter. That's when Mount Ida's Randy Dow fumbles, and Gurdon's Kevin Laster recovers. Moments later, on fourth down, KP Mix cuts it up the middle and rips off the 25-yard run for the Go Devils. And on the next play, Lassiter finds the end zone. That gave Gurdon a 14-7 lead, and the Go Devils would go up 21-7. But Mount Ida rallied to win in overtime. Final score, Lions 27, Gurdon 21. From Mount Ida to Elkins now, the Elks played host to Arkansas Baptist last night. It was Elkins' first home playoff game in nine years. 
Arkansas Baptist managed just 144 total yards as Elkins stuffed the run. On offense, Elkins senior Bo Mabry turns the corner and dives to the one yard line. On the next play, Rusty Tate scores for the Elks. A little bit later, Tate drops back and lofts it up to Thomas Short, who races 48 yards for the Elkins touchdown, and the Elks have pulled themselves into the second round of the playoffs. Final score, Elkins 33, Arkansas Baptist 0. Face paint, green wigs, and lots of love for the Little Johns in Danville last night. Undefeated Danville taking on the Lavaca Golden Arrows. And this one was close early, and the Little Johns would go to work. Watch junior Dustin Danner. He's going to plow and churn at the end of the play. It's a Danville first down, and the Little Johns are feeling good early. Then Danville's senior quarterback, Joseph Short, makes it look oh so sweet with the reverse pitch that's right on the money to Chris Woods. And Woods comes right at us for a nice Danville game. But the Little John's opening drive would stall as Lavaca's John Carver is going to stuff Justin Hayden on fourth down. Then it's Lavaca's turn. Quarterback Jeff Powers is going to take it around the end do some dancing, but this would be Lavaca's only first down in the first half as Danville throws a shutout. Final score, Little John's 41, Lavaca 0. Guys, it's great having facilities. I know you're all about all this. This is new to a lot of you. Uh, you know, none of us have ever been to playoffs before. But guys, it's more than a nice stadium. It's more than a big gym. It's more, all these things are nice. But guys, what it takes to win football games there's 27 reasons that I'm looking at. That's what it takes to win a football game. That stamps coach Jason Sanders, whose surprising Yellow Jackets took on Jesseville last night on its second possession. Jesseville's Andy Alt takes the double handoff and scampers 19 yards. Big play for the Lions. Four plays later, sophomore quarterback Sean Bates is going to look to pass, but then takes off for the corner. And it's a 27-yard Jesseville touchdown. The Lions were up 7 to nothing in the first quarter and held on to beat Stamps last night. Final score, Lions 37, Stamps 28. Little Rock Christian fielded its first football team this year and made its first playoff appearance last night at Charleston, and the Tigers dominated. Charleston quarterback Doc Crowley runs the option beautifully, and moments later, senior fullback Chris Akers caps the drive with a Charleston touchdown. A little bit later, Crowley goes in for the score. Charleston led 41 to nothing in the first quarter. Next week, the Tigers get box sight. Final score, Charleston 47, Little Rock Christian 14. Number three, Ryzen played host to the Smackover Buckaroos last night. This was a defensive struggle early until Smackover's Marcus Billings breaks free for a 46-yard gain. But on the next play, Brandon Moore's pass is intercepted by Ryzen's Lee Billings. And Ryzen handed the ball to Tyrell Johnson 19 times last night. He had 125 yards and four touchdowns. And Ryzen, which has not lost at home since 1999, plays host to Elkins next week. Final score, Ryzen 37. Over seven. The community of Hector gave former coach Mike Herod a warm welcome home last night, but the Wildcats were less than gracious to visiting P. Ridge. Hector's senior quarterback Eric Small handed the Wildcats a 14 to nothing lead on this 50-yard touchdown run. P. Ridge had to play without its starting quarterback due to injury, and Hector rolls. The Wildcats are at Junction City next week. Final score: Hector 42, P. Ridge 7. Yeah, Junction City. They, I mean, they're a very talented team. We went watched them last week uh, just speed everywhere and power and size and, and just unbelievable team uh, but you know I think we can play with them down at Danville last night the Little Johns played host to the talented Bearded Bears and the Hootons can feel the love tonight. But the hometown fans were feeling uneasy late in the fourth quarter with Danville clinging to a 14-7 lead. That's when Bearden marched down the field behind the running of Jermaine Gregory, who carried 30 times for 156 yards. But it's Bearden's Mark Phelan who caps the drive with this short touchdown. Danville and Bearden were tied 14-14 at the end of regulation. And they were still tied after one overtime at 21-20. In the second overtime on Danville's first play, senior quarterback Joe Short keeps it for the score, and after a missed extra point, the Little Johns led it 
27-21. Then it was Bearden's turn, and the Bears faced fourth down from the five. This is the ball game. Brian Rawls throws it to Creston Gibbs, but Danville senior Chris Woods is there to break it up. Undefeated Danville survives and travels next week to Speedy Mineral Springs. Final score, Danville 27, Bearden 21. Guys, we got to this point playing with great intensity. We've also played with great class and great character. We're proud of it for that going tonight. That's Mount Idaho's classic coach Frank Stapleton, who returned to his hometown of Danville last night for a semifinal showdown between the Lions and the Little Johns. Danville came into the game with a perfect 13-0 record and turned on the hometown crowd early with a nice scoring drive. Senior quarterback Joe Short passed to Chris Woods and two plays later, it's tailback Dustin Danner cutting back and heading 36 yards for the touchdown and a 7-0 Danville lead. Mount Ida would come back on its next series and tie it up. Senior running back Randy Ty breaks loose and he's gonna outrun the Little Johns to the end zone. That made it seven to seven and we're still in the first quarter. But it would stay that way until just after halftime. That's when Danville would march 68 yards for a touchdown. Short would keep it for a 27 yard score and a 13 to seven Danville lead. In the fourth quarter, Mount Ida fumbled a punt, setting up Danville for another touchdown. Danner made it 19-7 with this four-yard run, and Mount Ida was in trouble, but tried to rally with quarterback Josh Ellison passing over the middle to Tim Moreland, who comes down hard, and Danville's defense would clamp down after that to preserve the win and the Little John's perfect record. Final score, Danville 19. Mount Ida, seven. The offensive line did a great job during the second half. Defense stepped up big time, and you know, when they do that, that's just what happens when they go to the rock. Harding Academy has been Hooton's Arkansas football top ranked team all year in Class 2A with an explosive offense leading the Wildcats. But last night against visiting Junction City, it was Harding's defense that set the tone early. Harding lineman Kyle Myers gets in the backfield, forces and recovers the fumble. And the offense said thanks a lot with a six play drive. Harding quarterback Caleb Keyes finds Craig Kell in the flat and Kell will get the first down before he's sandwiched by the Dragon defense. That sets up running back Bradley Watkins coming up with a four yard touchdown run and Harding led it seven to nothing. Then the Wildcats defense came up big again. That's Jordan Huckabee with a perfect hit in the back and Josh Eckhorn grabs the interception. But the Wildcat offense couldn't do anything with the turnover and after a punt, Junction City looked to have an answer. Quarterback Phillip Davis breaks this long run but penalties would follow. On fourth and goal from the 16 yard line, Cal comes up and sniffs out the option pitch, but Junction would get another chance. Harding's offense turns the ball right back over. Keys is intercepted by Brandon Carter. He weaves his way, fights and churns his legs all the way down to the Harding five yard line. And on the next play, it's gonna be senior running back Justin Wood punching it in for the Junction City touchdown. The two point conversion would fail, however, and Harding maintained a seven to six lead. A little bit later, Harding would add to its lead up 14 to six when Keys and company go to work again. Keys finds Heath Adams for a first down, and a few plays later, it's Keys keeping it himself and finishing the drive with a punishing three-yard touchdown run that put Harding up 21 to six just before halftime. Keys added a couple of touchdown passes and another TD run in the second half, and Harding Academy is headed to the Rock as Junction loses in the semifinals for a third straight season. Final score: Harding Academy 41, Junction City 19. Next Saturday night at 6.30, War Memorial Stadium, it's Harding Academy against Danville for the Class 2A State Championship. Mount Ida finishes the season at number three, followed by Junction City. The rest of the Class 2A top 20 stays the same. Charleston won 12 games this year, so did Mineral Springs and Ryzen. Hughes is number eight, then it's Barton and Hampton, which was probably the best six and six team this season. Hector starts the second 10, then it's Bearden, Jesseville, Carlisle, and the Go Devils. Mark Tree finished the year with a nine and two record. Then it's the Buckaroos, Des Ark, and Hazen from the 6AA, and the Elkins Elks, which won 10 games this year.
coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Highlights from all over the state, including number one Springdale at number two Fort Smith Southside. A class 4A throwdown between top five teams, Pulaski Robinson and Magnolia. A double A dandy between Harding Academy and Hazen. Plus, highlights of the Airedales against the Goblins, the Tigers against the Hillbillies. Plus, we'll take you to Russellville for this week's Scholar Athlete of the Week and down to Arkansas County where a Riceburg cheerleader is this week's Spirit Student of the Week. Highlights of 15 games, pre-game pep talks, post-game reaction, and more. It's Arkansas's only statewide high school show. It's Hooton's Arkansas Football, next. You stuck it to him and you won it! This is our time of the year.